Hi everyone, Brienne from Pixite here, and I'm going to be coloring something. If you want to find this page, it's not in any books. It's a November daily. I just really wanted to color it. I think it has so much character and it's so much fun. I really love this dragon with the helmet and the scales, and I'm just going to have a lot of fun with this. So again, this is a November 2020 daily. So you can scroll back and look through and you can find this guy if you want to color along. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> this is another no planner. I didn't plan for this guy. I have an idea of what I want to do, but there's no specific plan. Okay, that being said, let's get going. So let's go to my colors and let's pick one of these palettes. I made each of these palettes. I know we get a lot of comments of people wanting these palettes. You can make your own palettes. It's super simple. You just go to new palette and then you play with the color wheel and each time you find a color that you like, you can just add. So you just keep on adding until you get colors that you want and you can do a lot of colors. I think it's like 11 or something for your own colors. What is it? So that's five, 10, sorry, 16. You can do 16 colors uh, to make your own palette if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, you can, I think I might have shown before, that's why I have that one blue color there. Maybe I was trying to show how to make a palette before. I'm trying to think what color I want this dragon to, to be. Do I want him to be traditionally green? Don't want him to be red. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Decisions, decisions. Or I could do like a purple dragon. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use, this is a fall, I called it fall colors, but there's a lot of different really cool colors in here. So I'm going to see if I can use this palette for most of it. The only thing I might have to outsource for is maybe the helmet, because I do want to make it look like a steel rusty kind of helmet so I'll probably have to go and get um, some grays for that okay the background I'm not gonna worry about because I'm thinking it's gonna be either a night sky I've done a lot of sunsets everyone's seen you know, how I do sunsets and clouds and stuff like that so I'll probably do a night sky for for this picture so I'm just gonna grab the pillow I'm gonna grab this lighter purple and I'm just gonna start filling in this dragon. Just tapping all the scales in the middle so the shading goes towards the outside. Gonna deepen it up for his face a little bit here. Now it might look very um, dark right now, but I do have a method to my madness here. Honestly, I just always really wanted to color this and that's why I am coloring this. I'm just gonna make sure my shading's in the right spot. Should be there more towards the inside. Maybe I'll deepen up these scales while we're at it too, because we're going to be layering lots of colors here. I can hear my house thawing out. It's really warm here today, well, warm for a winter day, so all the ice is crackling. Okay, so for the underbelly, 100% sure on that yet. Maybe I'll just keep it the same color for now and then we can lighten it up as we go. Okay. So to add some texture, I'm going to grab my splatter tool and I'm gonna just Add some texture with it on the scales. I 
I have it on a very like minimal opacity and minimal brush size. And I'm just swiping back and forth with a bright pink. face a little bit here. Get that bright pink in there too. It's going to be a layering process. I'm going to layer these colors. bringing up the brush size a bit. I just want to get like that texture in there. I'm actually going to layer some blues as well. It's going to be a funky colored dragon. Almost like rainbow dragon, I guess we could call this guy. So now I'm doing yellow. Get some blue in up here a little bit. Then we can do some yellow. I want in here. Let's try it orange. I'm just brushing it with the splatter tool and the splatter tool gives like this really nice um, texture to things. See how his scales look rainbow? Looks pretty neat actually. Okay, so moving on from that, I'm going to have to go back in and maybe add a little bit of shading. And I'm going to just, since we're doing this bright dragon here, I just want to grab out some blues for the underbelly. I think it's just going to be a simple kind of bluish underbelly with the layering of blues. And I'm just kind of pushing the lightest blue towards the middle to almost create like a iridescent shine. And you can add some on the scales if you want, but honestly, I think the scales look pretty good the way they are, but there is one color I wanted to grab from here. So let's give me a second here to find it. There it is. It's that orangey color. I just, I don't know, I really love that orangey fluorescent color from the neon palette. Now I do want to darken it back up a little bit. So I'm going to put the purple on a darker color and I'm going to just go over some of these areas that are really, really bright because I do like the bright fluorescent colors, but I do still want some shading on these scales. I do still want them to look a little bit rougher. So I'm just kind of going along the creases and the edges, shading with the splatter tool and the underbelly as well. It's okay, I want um, those bright colors, but I don't want them to uh, really take over the picture, if that makes sense. I just want them to be there. Now 
bring up the opacity a bit, put it back on automatic mode. Just going around the lip a little bit here, and since we have this bright blue, we can use that as well. And I'm just kind of mixing the darker shade as well in with that lighter blue. Okay, so I think for now that's good. I'm gonna grab my airbrush tool and I'm gonna put it back on automatic. And I'm just going to reiterate some of this shading here, a little bit closer to the scale, just to make the scales really pop. just a shade under the helmet and spots. Gives the illusion of depth. And this is a cartoon dragon, so I want him to look kind of cool and different. No, I don't think the blue works there. Maybe a little bit of blue like that, but not a lot. I'm just gonna try something else with the blue. Maybe just outline some spots. So I'm using some of the brighter colors to outline some of the lines and then some of the scales and maybe even some of these little bumpy, scaly, wordy type things. I don't think I'll use orange for that though. A little bit too bright, doesn't look quite right. Hold on a sec here. I feel like my table's banging against something making noise. Okay. Maybe a little bit darker of a color that might work a little bit nicer. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. And you can just shade some of these scales up here if you want. I'm just using the airbrush. And we'll go back to maybe, actually, let's, let's grab the pencil tool here for a second. Bring the opacity down. I'm 
just going to put it on freehand here for a minute. I'm just going to add this bright purple a little bit around here. Just kind of go where I highlighted the nose and add that blue in there too. Maybe make a little bit stronger of a highlight down here on the belly in a sweeping motion with the pencil tool. That's a little bit too much. Hold on, let's back the trolley up a bit here. I think I want more of a controlled highlight, so just maybe a little bit going down. But I don't want so much of it, if that makes sense just so you can tell it's there. Yeah, that's a little bit more what I was thinking. And maybe just shade around here a little bit more. I'm just kind of mixing and going along with it. So I do something and then I go over it and then I do something else and I go over with it. And then you just kind of get this layered look of lots of different colors and shading and highlighting. And it just makes for a really interesting looking picture in the end. And I might add a little bit more uh, splatter, bring up that opacity a bit. Dig it, I dig it. I like using the splatter to shade with this with the splatter that's going on on the dragon because it blends nicely. So that's what I'm doing right now. Then if I need to lighten an area up, I can just go and it'll blend nice. We put a little bit of yellow in the neck just to get that color flowing through it all. I'm thinking what color to make his beard here and I'm not too sure. I'm actually digging the way his teeth are looking from using like the freehand. I think I might just use a little bit of this light yellow splatter at the bottom to mix it in a little bit more and I'll keep the splatter in the tooth. Oops, towards the top. Yeah, I like that. And then the dragon's eye. Maybe do green. 
use the pillow fill to get some shading out of it. Maybe a little bit of a darker green. Mm, I don't like the green that much to be honest. I think yellow to bring out the yellow in the, the scales. Yeah, I think I'll do the yellow. Okay, now I'm going to go to my airbrush and let's, I think I'm going to keep it purple. I'm going to darken it up a bit, not too much. I'm just going to run it through. I'm on freehand mode right now. I'm not worried about it. And I also, also, also have to kind of lighten this up too, because this is a horn. So I need to get some kind of color in here. I'm using the splatter tool to blend some of the colors that are already in there. I'm going to go to airbrush and just make the ends a little bit more predominantly white. I still want that shading to kind of the speckle to go through it. I think that's an ear there is that bent metal. Well, maybe it's bent metal. That's horns there for sure. We'll get to those. And maybe what we'll do with the beard. I'm just trying this. I'm not sure if I'm keeping it. Yeah, I think the white strokes actually look good, or the off-white. So I'm just going to put some strokes of hair in his beard. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'll just finish the bottom part here. Just add some strokes through the hair. some bluish kind of strokes like an ombre almost just to see how that looks just exactly how I layer a woman's hair or portrait coloring I'm doing the exact same technique but I'm using it on the dragon's beard to see what kind of effects I can get
get a little bit of orange in there. I'm just layering it up, adding colors to make it look cool and vibrant and stand out and all that good stuff. Now, for the bead, maybe I'll get this both out of the way at the same time. Um, I'm gonna go to my metal colors down here and I'm going to go to my metallic fill. I'm gonna try a couple different colors until I get something that I like. I already like that for that. What about the helmet though? Hmm. No, I think the helmet needs to be a bit darker. I want it to be like rusty. Yeah, I think that's a good color for the helmet. Have a lighter color you could just do that maybe a couple there to match that we'll leave that for now and I also have to shade in here oops make sure I'm on automatic splatter just to add a little bit of splatter in there okay and then I think that is part of the dragon's head as well so just trying to think about what I want to do for my horns here. Okay, I think I'll color match this purple and I will use my pillow. Kind of shade that there. And for this, Yeah, rusty brown horns. And I might, I just might, I wanna see something here. Yeah, I kinda like the horns standing out a bit more and I find it's not standing out very much there. I had the idea to leave the splatter, but now that I'm seeing the rest of it come together, I would prefer it to have a little bit more solidity to it. I think that's okay for the horns for now. I do want a little bit of that. Um, what can I do here? Go to splatter and maybe just kind of get a little bit of that splatter in the tooth, but in more of the tooth color, if that makes sense. Just get this kind of going down 
little bit more into the tooth at the end just to blend it. Well, it's not a tooth, it's a horn. Go to the airbrush tool. I'm gonna fix these teeth a little bit too. Cause now that I'm seeing it all come together, I'm actually wanting more to find horns and teeth. Like he needs to go see a dentist kind of thing. Don't want them like sparkly white or nothing. I think that's pretty good. Kind of what I'm going for. Now, just so we can see how our picture is looking, I'm just going to go to the fill and I'm just gonna get rid of all these out of place areas so I can really see my picture and see if I wanna do anything else to it, which I'm going to be doing the helmet. I still have to do the helmet. And I still have to do some more work on the horns and up there. So that kind of being said, let's go to our metallics. I'm going to be using my pencil and I'm going to make some rusty looking helmet here. So just make sure I'm on automatic, which I am. I'm going to bring my brush size all the way up. And I'm going to go around the edges Maybe bring down the brush a bit and just kind of make this gangly looking rust. tool and light, lightly kind of swiping. Feel free to bring down your brush opacity if you find you're getting a little bit too much saturation. It's also going to depend um, how hard you're pressing but I'm going around the edges of the metal. I'm not too worried about it being perfect because I'm gonna use the blender and blend it out I think at some point so I'm just wanting to get the different kind of colors of ugly rusty burnt kind of looking helmet get stuff going different ways get a little bit of shine in there a little bit down here, blend it out a little bit. Just want to get like these overlapping, yucky looking colors happening here. Rusty old dragon helmet. That's exactly what we're making. And you can even use some of this burnt kind of metal color here. This is being done with the metallic palette, by the way, as well. In case you guys are wondering and you want to follow along.
Okay, so it's looking rusty. It's looking gross. Well, not gross, but you know what I mean. If you want to blur it out a little bit, I'm liking the way this stuff is layered, but I'm going to add a couple strong highlights. I'm going to use my airbrush. I'm going to add, no, it's too much. Bring my brush size down. A couple stronger highlights here. Okay, and then you could leave it, but I'm just gonna try my blur. Don't really want it to be white white, I just kinda want almost like the last newness of this helmet basic helmet basically, the last shine that's left. From this battered old helmet and I don't want to lose all my texture so I'm just gonna keep it strategic and strategic areas okay so that's good that's good now for the horns um, I'm gonna stick with mm, let's try the paintbrush tool see if we can make some cool effects with it so, automatic, deepen up that color, bring up the opacity, bring up the brush size, make some shading. I'm going to shade around the base and a little crack here in the corn, in the horns. kind of messing around mixing in different colors kind of like what I did in the helmet a bit Just to get that rusty look there too and then go up here doesn't really matter I guess but just to save myself some work make sure I'm on automatic then I'm just gonna color match some of the splatters and just get a little bit in there I want the, the tr some of the true colors that I use because I blended so much it's hard to get out a true color that you use. I know I used the new neon palette so I'll just go to the neon palette and grab a couple colors from there. Blend. minute shading over here we're almost done the dragon I can always change a couple of things on him later I do kind of want to get into the background I just want to shade some of these scales a little bit more especially towards uh, the back here even a little bit of brown on the horn again with the splatter. Well, 
I'm using like an orangey brown. Still a brown nonetheless. And my color match this dark purple again and just touch up. That's a tricky part with doing stuff that doesn't have closed lines when you're trying to get an effect. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes. brush size, just get a little bit of splatter detail in there that I lost. Not much, just a little bit. Okay. And I'm actually going to blur some of this out. So I'm going to blur maybe just a little brush size, bring down my blur amount. I just want to blur some of this. Not by a lot. Just blurring some of the highlights so they mix in a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to go to my laser tool, grab that yellow and just add a little bit of shine to that bead there maybe a little bit extra shine to these ones i didn't mind those two little dots here it's good okay i'm really liking this i think it's turning out really cool and now we're going to do our background so Let's use the, you know what, I don't use this gelatin uh, palette very often, but it is a really cool palette. So let's go to our pillow. Let's make that night sky. This, I'm not sure what that is. Looks like maybe it's a strap or a harness or something. So maybe I'll just color it brown. Go to my pencil tool. Can I just do that and that? Okay, now gotta make sure I'm on automatic. I'm gonna pick out a little bit of a lighter blue. I don't wanna use the blues that I already used though. Let's try oceanography. Getting in quite a few palettes here. And I just want to bring my brush size up. I just want to create this haze around the dragon. dark blue in there as well. Just play back and forth, playing with these blues. You don't want to lose sight of your dragon though. You want your dragon to pop. And by putting a bright color around, he's going to pop. Though, play around with it until 
you get what you're going for. You can use even off blues. Oh, I messed up here. that when my finger runs over an area and it's colored just the way I want it and I have to try and go in and fix it you can never get it right Okay, I fixed it all right. Okay, now where were we? Oceanography, that's where we were. So I'm just using the airbrush to kind of layer these waves of color. And if you want, you could even, We can try a bright blue, but I want to try and use something that's a bit different than what we used. Maybe this vapor color. I just want to see. So let's go to watercolor. just kind of making them stand out right which we want and then you can go over it with a darker I'm trying to get in layers is what we're trying to do we want a layered look I'm just gonna go to my recently used colors here brighter blues like this midnight blue Can you use it on higher opacity and just tap it in spots? And then what you can do is blur it out too, but I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna use the paintbrush tool. I'm just going to add some random kind of brush strokes paintbrush I'm just trying something. If I don't like it, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase it. Make sure I'm on automatic. And then I'm just gonna try and blur all this stuff and see how it looks with all this blurred in the background. Go to my water. 
watercolor. So it just kind of creates, when you layer like this, a little bit more of an interesting uh, textured background. That's all it's doing. So I did the colors and now I'm going back over it again to tone it down. And it just adds a little bit of interest, I find just gives it something to look at and it takes layers though like you have to do a couple different layers I'm thinking I do want to maybe use that bright blue one more time just just around his head a little bit so it almost looks like clouds, you know, like his head's kind of perching up out of some light, but it's all cloudy and kind of muffled around him. And you just get that interesting texture happening. I think it's pretty cool. Now, let's go to the white. Let's grab our technical pen. And we can add a couple of stars here if we want. I don't like making my stars big. I find if they are big, then they don't look... If they are big, they don't look realistic. I like them to be... I do vary the sizes a bit. I'll make like one big one. But I don't make... Them all big. I find it looks off if they're all big. And then you can cluster some too because stars are clustered together. But in this case I probably stay away from it because there's so much going on with the clouds. And that's really all I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep it very simple. And that's it. I think it looks good. The helm's rusty. It's not too rusty, but it does look old. I love the beard. I love the colors. I think this turned out really great. Thanks for joining me today, guys. This is Brianne from Pixite. And if you have something that you'd like to see from one of our new books or even an older book that you would like some help with on a tutorial, whether it's coloring animals, comment below and we will try to get to that for you. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.